Hey folks, how are we doing today? This is Bob from Bob's EV Garage. And on my workbench today, I've got an e-bike battery. It's of unknown condition, but it was in the recycling, so it's probably got something wrong with it. It doesn't show any sign of having power inside it. And yes, I've turned that switch on. So we're just gonna take a look inside because I'm curious. Let's do it. So I've come slightly prepared. I've got this Phillips head screwdriver that we're gonna need to take it apart. And I'm just gonna go through and do that. So I suspect we might have a slight issue here because the person who recycled it chose to leave the bracket in and to not leave the key, which means that it's gonna be hard for me to see if there's any screws hidden under here that I need to undo. So this could actually be a problem for us. Okay, so I'm just going to push up from this end and let's see if it opens. Yeah, okay. So that'll open at least part of the way. Uh, I'm not particularly afraid of breaking it, to be honest. Oop, yeah, it's going. There we go, we've broken two of the back screws. Uh, there we go. Okay, it's free. Freedom! Uh, let's, let's open this up and see what kind of cells we've got inside here. So immediately I'm seeing a BMS here. It's obviously designed to limit the amount of current that can come out of the battery. So it's just a protection circuit. I'm having a look inside the BMS here. It's gonna be hard to show you guys a picture of this. Um, I am feeling that it may have the balance circuitry. So this might be a well-equipped BMS rather than just a very simple system. And I'm also seeing name brand cells, which I'll show, show you in a second. So here we have the BMS. It's very simple. It's just a Chinese cheap one. Um, six MOSFETs, three on either side, plus one, I guess, for charging. Uh, it's got some type of microprocessor in there or some some type of integrated circuit, uh, but stock standard construction. Oh, I can't tell if this is a 14S or 13S battery, so I'm just gonna count that and check. Okay, so there is 15, oh, there appears to be 15 or 16 pins there, which indicates a 14S configuration. We'll confirm that when we actually look at the battery pack, but for now, that's what I'm seeing. Okay, so I'm kind of disappointed actually, but this BMS does not include balancing. I don't know why, but it doesn't. So I wouldn't really trust this. So they've used good cells, but if the BMS can't bring them back into line in, in an event that they go, they get discharged too far and then go slightly out of balance, that can cause pack damage. So I wouldn't trust this. Um, that's the part number. I don't think that'll mean anything to be honest. Like. There's so many just proprietary codes and things that mean nothing online. Um, but yeah, that's the BMS. Got our little shunt resistors there. They measure the voltage drop, or rather the computer measures the voltage drop across them, and then that, that limits the current, so it knows when to shut, shut the power off to the motor or whatever. Okay, so I've taken off most of the wrapping. Uh, there's still a little bit, we'll just rip that off. Lots of cells, wow. Um, and let me bring this up to the camera so you can see. Uh, might be hard to read, camera quality isn't so good, but these are far out, no, I can't read it. Oh, that's better. NCR18650 GA. And I believe that makes them a Panasonic cell. Which is good, this is good. That means that this e-bike battery used quality cells, which means that it'll have longer life, generally, and the cells will probably have lower internal resistance than a Chinese cell of similar caliber. Now I'm gonna print out the spec sheet and we can take a look. 
Okie dokie, here's our spec sheet for the NCR18650GA. The first thing we see, 3300 milliamp hour capacity. So this is a high capacity cell, which generally means low current. Looking at our configuration, we can see that they're set up in groups of four. So the total amp hour capacity of the battery will be four times this, or roughly 13 or 14 amp hours. Now, we can see this is a 4.2 volt maximum cell, uh, 48 grams, whoops, just bumped the camera, uh, and it's just a standard 18650 cell. Discharge characteristics, so we see they've done a maximum test of 10 amps, so for a battery with four cells in parallel, you wouldn't want to go above 40 amps of current draw, and even at that 10 amps, we're looking at a temperature rise of almost up to 60 degrees, so it's you wouldn't want to run these cells too long at that temperature or at that current. Let's see, have we got anything else good here? Yeah, discharge temperature characteristics and cell cycle life characteristics. This is the big one because it looks like this cell really starts to degrade after only like a few hundred cycles. And what that tells us is that this battery, considering that it was in the recycling, has probably just reached the end of its life. Like you'd achieve You'd, you'd run these cells all the way down within like a couple years of constant use. So I imagine this battery is just old and that's the issue. Having a look at the cell setup, we can actually count the number of cells in series or the number of cell groups in series. And we do that by looking at all of the grouped cells. Group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14 cell groups in series, which is roughly a 58 volt battery, nominal. Okay, so guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, this was filmed as an afterthought, but I think it's really important to mention that the series connections, so the ones that carry the current between cell groups, there's only two nickel strips. And even though the batteries themselves are rated for 40 amps, like total continuous current, these nickel strips are probably only 10, 10 amp rated each, which means that if you try and pull the full 40 amps, you're gonna get really, really hot, especially in these areas here, and that will transfer to the battery cells and potentially cause damage. So you'll wanna avoid drawing more than like 20 amps from a battery like this. Obviously you can upgrade if you wanna just uh, attach another nickel strip, weld another nickel strip over the top of each one. That'll give you that extra current ability. But this battery will not, will not output 40 amps reliably. Cool. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Bless you.